Praise the Lord and a very good evening to every one of you who has joined us on our online platforms. This is ICC Kitengela Tuesday prayer service. We are so glad that you have chosen to join us. Before I invite the worship team to take us into the presence of God, allow me to read a scripture found in the book of Job chapter 19, verse 25. Job 19, 25, the Bible says, I know that my Redeemer lives and that in the end he will stand on the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes, I and not another. How my heart yearns within me. How my heart yearns within me. Friends, Job, all of us know the story of Job. Job went through a hard time, toughest time of his life. Probably none of us has gone through what Job went through. But we can identify with Job. In the pain, in the loss, we can identify with Job. Job lost most of his life. Talk about livestock. Talk about uh, sons and daughters. But then this same person in, verse, in, 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 in the scripture we've just read, he confessed, I know my Redeemer lives. And we are here, we are here to declare our Redeemer lives because this is not something we are guessing. We know because Jesus came, Jesus died, Jesus resurrected, and Jesus is our Redeemer. He redeemed us by his blood. He redeemed us by his death and resurrection. And we know, we know that he lives because we know that he came, we know that he died, we know that he resurrected. And the Bible records after resurrection, he ascended into heaven and he is seated at the right hand of majesty in heaven praying for us. So we can declare, we can confess tonight that we know our Redeemer lives. In your pain, in your loss, in your trouble, in your turmoil, declare, confess, find encouragement and hope in the words found in Job 19.25 that I know my Redeemer lives. And Job will say, I myself will see him. And that is our prayer that you will see God even in that pain, you will see God. Even in that loss, you will see God. Even in that trouble, even in that turmoil, you will see God because Jesus lives. And because he lives, we shall face tomorrow. Shall we pray? Our Father in heaven, we come before you in the mighty name of Jesus, our Redeemer. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for you died for us. You resurrected from the dead and you ascended into heaven and you are seated at the right hand of the majesty in heaven praying for us. You are our redeemer. You live eternally. Thank you because you redeemed us by your blood. You redeemed us that we may have eternal life. You redeemed us that we may have abundant life. You redeemed us that we might have hope. We redeemed us that we might experience you, Lord, in our daily lives. We thank you, our redeemer. We pray tonight, O oh God, even as we gather virtually to pray, we ask that Lord will encounter with you our Redeemer in our pain, in our loss, Jehovah, in our anxiety, in our worry, Jehovah, in our moments of dilemma, Jehovah God. When we are asking questions, Lord, may we encounter with you. May we see with our very own eyes, O oh God, even tonight as we pray. We thank you for this moment and we thank you for the privilege of prayer. Thank you that God, we can find encouragement in the words of Job 19. 25 that I know my Redeemer lives. In Jesus' name we pray. So even as the worship is going on, go ahead, post, post our prayer in our comment section, and there are pastors who are just waiting to pray for you and with you. God bless you, even as we pray together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the victory that we have in you, O oh God. Come on, just begin to declare that indeed you are more than overcomers. You are more than overcomers in Him. Thank you, Jesus, for the victory that we have in you. Thank you that you wear the victor's crown, Lord. You wear the victor's crown, Jesus. You have overcome the world, O oh God. You have overcome, Jesus.
Jesus the Messiah. You're the hope of all the world. By your grace, I live and breathe to worship you. Hallelujah. Oh, you have overcome. You have overcome. You have overcome. Hallelujah. Jesus, you have overcome. Hallelujah. You have overcome. You have overcome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus, you have overcome the world. Hallelujah, Jesus. You have overcome. We thank you, God. We declare your power. Every high thing must come down. Hey. Oh, every high thing, yeah. Every high thing must come down. Every strong. Father and our God, we continue to wait in your presence. We thank you for the privilege and opportunity that we have that at a moment like this, as a congregation, we can dedicate time to come together and to honor you and to worship you and to pray for specific needs in our congregation, specific needs in our nation, specific needs in our economy, specific needs in the church, O oh King of Glory. And Father, we continue to unite our hearts together with the entire congregation and those who are listening and those who are watching uh, with us uh, tonight 
King of glory, may you be glorified. We acknowledge your sovereignty over our lives as a church. We acknowledge your sovereignty over our lives individually and collectively. Father, we also appreciate what you are to us, O oh Jehovah. And Father, even during these moments when everything around us seems to be quite challenging, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you that we can come, that there is an avenue that still we can come and exalt you, we can come and, and, and worship you. Father, we thank you because you encourage us in your word that you are building your church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it, O oh Jehovah. Father, as your church, we continue to wait on you. As your church, we are continuously looking up to you each and every day, each and every moment, and even today, this Tuesday, we unite together and say, Father, continue to strengthen us as your church continues to build us as your church, O oh Jehovah. You have reminded us this week, Lord, that Redeemer, you live, Redeemer, you live, and there is nothing that is too difficult for you. And therefore rejoice because we know that our Redeemer liveth. Our Redeemer lives and you reign, you reign, you reign in our affairs, Lord. So help us to be at a posture where we know that we serve an awesome God, we serve a living God, and there is nothing that is too difficult for you. We thank you, our Father. We honor you. We exalt you. There is none like you, our King. There is none like you, our Redeemer. Oh, be glorified in our lives. Be glorified in our homes. Be glorified in our workstations. Be glorified in our businesses. We thank you. We honor you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Even as we continue to be at a place of prayer, we encourage you wherever you are that let's continue looking up to God. Let's continue waiting upon the Lord because he is a good God and he has promised us that he is building his church and the gates of hell will not prevail. And this week, the Lord has been encouraging us and is encouraging us that he is still on the throne and he reigns even as we navigate through the theme, our Redeemer lives, our Redeemer lives, our Redeemer lives. And because our Redeemer lives, we know that we have divine protection. Because our Redeemer lives, we know that we have divine deliverance. Because our Redeemer lives, we know that we have divine security. Because our Redeemer lives, we know that he Indeed, we are safe. And even as we continue to pray, wherever you are, I encourage you as I, we look at Job uh, chapter 42, Job chapter 42, a great reminder that our Redeemer lives. Job answered, uh, Job answered the Lord and said, I know you can do all things. I know you can do all things and no purpose of yours can be thwarted. No purpose of yours can be thwarted. Why don't you go before the Lord this evening and just say, no, what Lord, I know you can do all things and none of your purposes can, can, can be thwarted. And as a church, we are uniting together and say that, Lord, may your purposes prevail. May you continue to, to do only that which you can do. Father, we continue to look up to you. And we are saying tonight that we know that you can do all things. You can do all things because you reign. You can do all things, Redeemer, because you live. You can do all things because that is who you are. You are our rock. You are our, uh, our, our Savior. You are our God. And when we are in you, we can rest assured that you can do all things through Christ who sustains us. Job goes on to say that who is that hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore, I have uttered what I did not understand things too wonderful for me, which I did not know. Here and I will speak, I will question you, and you make it known to me. I had heard of you by hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees you. Therefore, I despise myself and repent in dust 
and ashes. I want you to take a minute and just go before the presence of the Lord tonight and just acknowledge that, you know, there are moments in our lives that we can feel that we have been so overwhelmed and we rely on the things that we we have had. But this evening we are trusting God that apart from hearing the Lord that we can say like Job that I have heard about you. But today, but today I have seen with my own eyes. I have seen with my own eyes. I have seen with my own eyes. Hear and speak to me. Father, we thank you. Because when we talk about our Redeemer lives, it is an experience that we have gone through. We thank you for the many testimonies that have come through even during this difficult time. Father, reminding us that indeed you are still sovereign and you reign in the affairs of your children. And tonight as we gather and as we acknowledge uh, what you continue to do and as we, as we acknowledge that you, you are still alive and you reign in the in our affairs, O oh Jehovah. Father, we pray that may we continue to experience your divine intervention in the things of life, what we are going through currently. Father, we ask that you may continue to do a divine intervention that we can actually see and we can actually acknowledge and we can actually appreciate that our Redeemer lives. That is our cry tonight, O oh God. That is our cry tonight, O oh God wherever we are, our, our Father, that we will be ex in a place where we can testify of your goodness in the land of the living because our Redeemer lives. Our Redeemer lives. Our Redeemer lives. Be our protector. Be our security, Lord. When all around us is falling down, our Father, we are crying out to you, O oh Jehovah, because we know that you are already on the throne and you are doing doing things behind the scenes. Father, I pray that you'll open our spiritual eyes as your children. Open our spiritual eyes as your children that we will be able to see things in the supernatural realm that we shall come out so victorious because we know that our Redeemer lives, our Redeemer cares for us and he will protect us, he will deliver us, he will take charge of our situation, he will take charge of his church, he will take charge of his children, he will take charge of this nation and therefore we are not fearful, we can come and know that our Redeemer lives and we can rejoice, we can rejoice and acknowledge that our God reigns. Our God loves us. Father, we thank you. We thank you because there is no God like you. We thank you because there is no God like you. We thank you because there is no God like you. May you continue to build us as a church that we will remain strong knowing that our Redeemer lives and we are at a good place when we hold on to our Maker, when we hold on to our King, when we hold on to our God that we will remain victorious in the, in the land of the living for the glory and honor of His name. We thank you, our Father. We honor you. We honor you. And tonight we are declaring individually wherever we are but also collectively as a congregation, as we unite our hearts, different parts of this town, different parts of this nation, different parts globally as, a, as your children and saying, Lord, may you reign, may you reign, may you reign, because indeed you are our Redeemer and you live. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. Uh, as we continue to pray, I would like to uh, we read the book from the book of Job, uh, chapter 42, verse 10 uh, to 17. The Bible says, after Job had prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his fortunes and gave him twice as much as he had before. All his brothers and sisters and everyone who had known him before came and ate with him in his house. They comforted and consoled him over all the trouble the Lord had brought on him. And each one gave him a piece of silver and a gold ring. The Lord blessed the latter part of Job's life more than the former part. He had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 
a thousand yoke of oxen and a thousand donkeys. And he also had seven sons and three daughters. The first daughter he named Jemima, the second, he, uh, the second Kezia, and the third Karen Hapuch. Nowhere in all the land were there found women as beautiful as Job's daughters, and their father granted them an inheritance along with their brothers. After this, Job lived 140 years. He saw his children and their children to the fourth generation, and so Job died, an old man and full of years. So uh, one thing that we are going to pray for uh, this evening is like the way the Bible has said that after he prayed for his friends, then the Lord restored his fortunes. And if we can remember, especially in the book of Job, that Job had been deserted by his friends, by his family members, by his relatives. They had gone away. And even the ones that had come to condole with him, I mean, they, they, they spoke and God was saying like they did not speak the truth about him. So sometimes in our lives we have friends like these friends who are uh, people who depart from us when, uh, or maybe speak evil of us when we are in trouble. Maybe we have such kind of people, but uh, according to the uh, text that we have read, is that when he prayed for his friends, then the Lord restored his fortunes. And therefore, I want us to take some time to pray for our friends, to pray for those people who have deserted us. The time when you were so much in need, someone went away from you. I want us to take some time and pray for such people. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. We want to pray for our friends, oh my Father. We want to pray for people who have deserted us, oh my Father. When those times when we were so much in need, people who ran away from us, oh my Lord. Father, we want to pray for them in Jesus' name. We want to pray for the people who have not spoken well about us, oh my God. Father, we want to pray that, oh Lord, you shall bless them. We pray, oh my Father, that, Lord, they will come, oh Lord, into the knowledge of Jesus Christ. We pray that, oh my Father, you shall forgive them. We pray that, oh my Father, you shall set them free, oh my God. Father, we pray for your blessings upon them because we know that, oh my Father, as we pray for our enemies, as you say, in, in the book of Matthew, that, Lord, we should, we, should, we should pray for our enemies, oh God. Father, we pray that, Lord, you shall bless, oh my Father, every person, oh my Father, in our lives, whom you have enabled, oh my Father, to come into our lives. Be them, oh my Father, family members, oh my Father, relatives, or even friends or colleagues, oh my Father, in our working places. Father, we pray for them this evening in Jesus' name that, Lord, you will touch their lives, that you will bless them, that, oh, Lord, you will, you will strengthen them, oh, my Father. Let them experience your power, oh, God, wherever they are, oh, Lord, this evening, in the name of Jesus. Because we know that, oh, my Father, just as Job, oh, my Father, after he prayed for his friends, Lord, we read that, oh, my Father, you restored, oh, my Father, the things that he had lost, oh, my God. And, Father, in the same way, oh, my Father, in the same faith, oh, my Father, and believe, we believe that today, oh, my Father, as we pray for our friends, as we pray, oh, my Father, for those, oh, my Father, who departed from us, oh, my Lord, Lord, you are going to restore us, O oh Lord. Father, we thank you. You are going to restore for us, O oh my Father, the things that, O oh my Father, uh, we, 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 we lost, O oh my God. So, Father, we thank you so much for our friends, and we pray for your blessings, O oh my Father, upon them. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. So, we, we, we look further into, into this scripture, that it was not only a restoration of, uh, of uh, the things that Job had lost, but there was also restoration of friends because we see after the Lord had, 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 had restored the fortunes of Job, then the other thing is that all his brothers and sisters and everyone who had known him before came and ate with him in his house. So we are praying that there will be restoration of family members, restoration that they will come, that they will come to our, our places as the Lord is restoring us, is going also to restore the relationships that we have. So we pray for restoration of uh, of our relationship. Father, we, 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 we come before you, oh my Father. I want to pray and I pray this evening, oh Lord, that you will restore, my Father, relationships that were lost, oh my Father. Those days, those times, oh my Father, when we were in difficult times and people ran away from us. Father, we are praying that, oh my Father, you are going to restore. 
You're going to restore those relationships, oh my father. You're going to restore my father, our, 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 our brothers. You're going to restore my father, our sisters. You're going to restore my father, our friends. There's going to be restoration, oh my father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Even in our working places, oh my father, the relationships that, that uh, I mean, uh, uh, were, were broken, oh my father, in our workplace, oh my father, with our workmates, oh my father, or maybe our bosses, in our businesses, oh my Lord. Father, we pray for restoration in the name of Jesus. Father, we also want to pray, uh, Lord, that even after you restored Job, oh my father, we can see that, oh my father, you blessed him with, with long life and that he was able to see children of his children, oh my father. And Lord, we want to pray this evening in Jesus' name that, oh my father, every one of us, oh my father, in this place, oh my father, as we pray today, we pray that, oh my father, you shall bless each and every one of us, oh my father, with long life in the name of Jesus. Father, I commit each and every one of us, oh my father, that Lord, you'll give us and grant us good health. you grant our children, oh my father, good health. you grant our children, our, our children, our grandchildren, oh my father, good health so that, oh my father, they will enjoy long life, oh my father, like Job. Father, we thank you so much, oh my Lord, because you are a God who is able to restore my father. And that already, Lord, you have started the work of restoration in our lives. You have restored, oh my father, our lives, oh my father, by dying on the cross and saving us, oh my father, from sin, oh Lord. And now we have been set free, oh my father, because Lord, you are in the business of restoration. And therefore, we thank you that, oh my father, whatever we have lost, Lord, you have restored. The relationship that we have, we have lost, Lord, we thank you that those relationships are being restored. And we thank you for the long life that you are giving us, O oh God. Father, I bless your name and I thank you for your faithfulness. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, we continue to exalt you. We continue to magnify you, Lord. We continue to honor you. We continue to declare that, Jehovah, you are indeed our Redeemer. We have no other God but you. Our hope is in you, Jehovah. We look to you, O oh God, this night, O oh dear Father, this evening, O oh God, which you have allowed us to gather, my Father, and just trust in you, and just commit our lives to you, our Father. We have no other God but you. That is why we have set aside this moment to pray pray, my Father, to trust in you, O God, to entrust, to entrust you, Father, our lives, O God, to entrust our desires to you, to entrust our nation to you, my Father, O King of glory, to acknowledge your greatness, to acknowledge your majesty, to acknowledge your power, to acknowledge your loving kindness, to acknowledge your faithfulness, Lord, to acknowledge your goodness, for we have no other God but you. No one cares about us the way you care. No one loves us the way you love us, O God. No one, Father, satisfies us the way you satisfy us, oh my Father. No one fulfills the longing of our hearts the way you do, Jehovah. And that is where we gather tonight, my Father, oh King of glory, to adore you, to bless you, to worship you, our Father, thanking you for this opportunity to cry out to you, oh God, to exalt you, our Father, to lay down our lives before you, to make known our request to you, dear Master, because you are God Almighty, because you are God is all powerful because you are God our Father who cares about us oh God who is concerned about our lives who is concerned about our affairs who is concerned about Jehovah the little details in our lives oh we thank you oh we bless your name there is no other God like you receive the glory our Father even as we continue in prayer oh Lord receive the glory thank you because of how you have revealed yourself to us tonight oh God and even the way you continue to reveal yourself to us. Thank you for the you have encouraged just this far, dear Father. Oh, King of glory, as we continue praying, may our ears be open to hear. May our hearts, oh God, be open to receive your instructions, my Father, to receive encouragement, oh God, in the name of Jesus. So, Father, we bless you. Father, we honor you. What a wonderful God you are. What a mighty God you are. None can compare to you. Oh, we give you glory. Oh, we give you honor in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. So friends, even as we continue to pray, we want to look at 1 Peter 1 from verse 18 uh, downwards. And we want to look at the words of Peter to discourage believers in those times. Discouraged because of persecution. Discouraged because of the tribulation they were going through. Discouraged because of the tough times that they were experiencing then. 
And I'm reading from the Amplified Version. This is what 1 Peter 1, 18 says. You must know. You must know. Recognize that you are redeemed, ransomed from the useless, fruitless, empty way of living inherited by tradition from your forefathers, not with corruptible things such as silver and gold. And I want us to begin there. We must know. We must know this has already happened. Peter is telling us this has already happened. You must recognize. You must be aware that you are redeemed. Even as this week we are looking at our Redeemer lives. Yes, we must know and recognize that we have been redeemed from the empty way of living inherited by tradition from our forefathers that sinful nature we inherited from adam we have been redeemed that empty way of life we have been redeemed from the slave market of sin and so let us thank god let us go before god with a thanksgiving and a praise to him because of redeeming us in the first place and it says not with corruptible things as silver and gold we shall see how we have been redeemed so let us just thank god father in the name of Jesus. We want to thank you, oh God. Words fail us, Father, to express our gratitude and our thanks, oh God, because of redeeming us, oh Lord, because of purchasing us back, oh God, because of buying us from the slave market of sin. Thank you, our Father, for redeeming us, oh Lord. Thank you, our God, for ransoming us, oh Lord. Thank you, our God, that it was not with perishable things uh, like gold and silver. These are things we treasure on earth. We treasure them so much, O King of glory. We are happy when we have them, but you are telling us, Lord, these are perishable things, corruptible things, and Lord, these are not the things which you used to redeem us, our God. We are grateful to you. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for us, to shed his blood for us, O God, so that we might be redeemed, so that we might be forgiven, so that we might be saved, uh, so that we might be sanctified, uh, so that we might ma- we might be made one uh, with you, oh God, our Father, in spirit and in truth. Uh, we are so grateful for redeeming us uh, as believers, oh God. Uh, we are the redeemed of the Lord and we know our Father, oh King of glory, it costed you, it costed you, and we thank you, our God, for choosing to redeem us. Bible continues to say in verse 19 that with the precious blood of Jesus Christ, not with corruptible things, but with the precious blood of Jesus, a lamb without blemish or spot, showing us the sacredness and 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 and, and the, what, whatever redeemed us was so sacred. That is what Peter is telling us. It was not a it was not a perishable thing. It was the precious blood of Jesus. What can make us whole again? Nothing but the blood. What can wash us white as snow? Nothing but the blood. So go ahead and continue thanking God for the blood, Father. We thank you for the blood of Jesus, the blood that was shed at Calvary, so that we might be redeemed. We are so grateful, Lord God, to know that it was by the precious blood of Jesus, the blood that will never lose its power, the blood that will never lose its anointing, the blood that will never lose lose its strength, the blood that will never lose its significance. We are grateful that we are redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It continues to say in verse 20, it is true that he was chosen and foreordained before the foundation of the world, but he was brought out to public view, made manifest in these last days. See, friends, it was a plan of God. God has planned before, had planned beforehand to redeem us by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. That is something to thank God for. And because God had planned to redeem us by the precious blood of Jesus and Jesus came and died and resurrected, friends, we can believe God. We can believe God for any plan that he has for us. Verse 21 says, through him you believe. Through Jesus, through what Jesus has done, we believe. And then says, we believe in God who raised him, raised him up from the dead and gave him honor and glory so that your faith and hope are centered in God. Your faith and hope is rested in God. 
Hallelujah. Let us go before God and let us thank God and let us tell him, Father, because we were redeemed by the blood of Jesus, which is not perishable, that lives forever, that blood that saved us, because we are redeemed by that blood. Yes, we thank you, Lord, that this was a plan you foreordained long ago to redeem us by the blood of Jesus. Oh, what can you not do, our God? Even now we have desires. We have plans, my Father. We have ambitions. We know you are able to bring them to pass our Father. Those promises you have spoken to us that even now when there is darkness and gloom, confusion and anxiety, Lord, you are still the God who brings to pass what you have promised our Father. Whatever you say you do, whatever you promise you fulfill. You are a God who keeps your word, our Father. And so we are praying tonight, oh God, because we have come to believe in you, because you have come to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, oh, because you have come to believe in you, our Father, who raised Jesus from the dead and gave him honor and glory. Our God, we are praying, let our faith and hope be centered in you. Let our faith and hope be centered on the finished work of Jesus on the cross. Let our faith and hope be centered, oh God, on the blood that speaks a better thing than the blood of Abel. Let our hope and faith be rested in you who changeth not, in you who is our Redeemer, who lives eternally forevermore. Oh, our Father, let our hope and faith rest in you who changes not, rest in you the unstoppable God, the unshakable God, the unchangeable God, the one who was and is and is to come. Hallelujah. Oh, our Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. Oh, there is no God like you. Thank you for encouraging our hearts. Thank you for encouraging us and strengthening our faith to continue believing and to continue hoping in you. You are our living hope and our and our lives are centered. Our hopes, our faith are centered on you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and we believe. Amen and amen. What a moment we've had in the presence of the Lord. We know the Lord has heard our cry and he has answered our prayers. Thank you so much for joining us for our prayer service. We look forward to have you join us tomorrow morning, even as we continue trusting and praying to this God. And now may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace and give you joy and give you hope in Jesus' name. And now we can share the words of the grace together. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of us now and forevermore. Amen and amen. Have a wonderful evening.